Hi friends, welcome back. So green has returned to the market. As you can see, uh, we are on the rebound and uh, this is the S&P, lots of stocks are up, Nvidia, Microsoft, uh, Meta, Tesla, Costco. Um, on the world markets, also a lot of green. Uh, however, I wanna note though, that it looks like the Japanese uh, financials are still struggling. You see the bank stocks are down. And um, this was the headline, stocks stage rally in Wall Street's wild reversal. And essentially you're getting record moves to the downside yesterday and now we got record moves to the upside today. It is a crazy world out there. Uh, moreover, um, Kamala Harris uh, chose her vice presidential running mate. Um, it's gonna be Tim Walls, uh, we'll go over the bat a little bit. And um, these are some more headlines. Solomon says Fed will forego emergency cut despite weak jobs data. And uh, if you're checking out the news, it was pretty nuts. Um, all these people on Wall Street are crying and the other thing's crashing. And it's like, oh my God, the Fed's got to cut today. Do it today. You got to save us from certain doom. Um, but uh, Goldman Seal is like, the emergency meeting's not happening. Sorry, guys. And uh, essentially, I, I think he, you know, was talking to the Fed and, and maybe he was the one who was trying to, <laughs> trying to ask for the emergency meeting. And uh, perhaps, you know, they told him directly it's not happening. But um, yeah, no emergency cuts. So stop asking. And uh, it's interesting because, um, you know, right now we're looking at or at least kind of expecting that uh, they're going to cut in September. Um, I've said all along that they could probably just stand pat, but there's a lot of pressure right now to cut. Now, the crazy thing about this, though, is there's a different way you could view to cut, right? You can view the cut to say, hey, we have beaten inflation and now we can lower interest rates and go to like a more neutral rate. So that's if you believe inflation is beat. Uh, the other way you look at the cut in September to our rate cut here is... Man, the economy looks terrible. We need to get economic activity going again. We got to cut and we're going to do a big cut. So, right, it depends. And, you know, my particular opinion on this stuff, I, I, I think you should either, you know, stand pat or it can theoretically raise. Um, I understand, I understand there's going to be a lot of pain out there, but the, the problem is, is like we're in a printing cycle for a long time. Um, our unemployment actually isn't normalized. And it's, you know, difficult to tell people that it's going to get tougher. Uh, it's like I said, it's difficult to tell people that. Um, the other issue that you have to deal as well is that we're all connected uh, globally, right? So a lot of uh, Japanese was uh, Japanese money, uh, the yen was flying around the world and uh, they had emergency meeting over there. So no emergency meetings in USA, but they are having emergency meetings over in Japan. And um, it's been really, really volatile. So I'm talking about the yen and the Japanese market. Uh, so we had a big rebound over there. Basically, it was like 12% to the downside one day, and then you got 10% to the upside the next day. And it reminds me of, you know, when you see this kind of volatility, um, this is usually an unhealthy market, right? So we saw this, like, say, in the 30s. We saw this in the great financial crisis. Um, I'm just bringing up a chart here. These are the, um, you guys can pause it if you like, but this is essentially uh, the largest moves in the S&P 500 history by percentage, and then the uh, largest moves to the downside <laughs> on, the, on the right side uh, by percentage and, and they all they always kind of coincide so when you get these big moves like we've seen the last couple of days uh, it's just really really volatile now um, if you want to get some uh, more positivity and you're tired of the volatility um, pick up a copy of my book uh, this is over on amazon it's called positive angle and i always mention this because if, if you guys enjoy watching the channel uh, i think you'll really enjoy checking out the book so yep yeah, over on amazon go go check out a copy um, I bring that up and, uh, you know, we talk about these things because I've, I've seen this game before. <laughs> I lived through dot-com bubble. I lived through the, uh, uh, great financial crisis. So, and, um, it's, it's funny because, you know, for those of you who are kind of new to this game or, or younger, you, you may not think that the larger macro affects you, but it, it does. It affects the choices that, that you have in life and, and sort of, you know, what, what you can do with your money, et cetera. So, um, this is actually where we are now with, with bonds, uh, two years at the 4%. 10 year is at 3.89. This has also been very, very volatile. If you've been watching this, it's, it's been nuts. Everything's volatile right now. But that's basically the story. Everything's volatile. Uh, Bitcoin is back up again. It was down quite a bit. I think it hit like a 52,000, something like that. Um, and now it's like closer to 57. <laughs> and that's it. It's it. We're on the rebound, guys. We're on the rebound. Uh, I, I guess it's kind of like uh, if, if you, you know, have that uh, unstable lover and, and you keep breaking up and getting back together. And that's sort of what, what we're doing here. <laughs> so at the moment we're, we're back together. Um, but uh, you know, how long, how long will that last? Uh, this is the dollar. It has been gaining again, but um, I've actually been uh, watching cause I I'm here in Korea and, and the, there's just the movements between dollar and Korean won has been just been nuts. It's been, it's really been up and down just like the market. And it's, it's just really unhealthy um, today though. We did have some green. Uh, you can see it's green across, uh, all sectors, though, um, 
One thing I, I would point out though, keep an eye on uh, utilities. Uh, that tends to be a very safe sector. Um, if, if you start seeing that going up, that means people are retreating to safety basically, right? They just want that, that dividends. Um, but uh, lately though, people have been selling their winners to kind of move themselves into bonds or safer things. But we did see some dip buying uh, in, the, uh, in the tech sector, which I'll show you guys in a moment here. Um, it was this, it was actually really interesting. This is the headline here. Um, hedge funds bought the dip in U.S. stocks on Monday. And it said here, this was the uh, single U.S. single stocks saw the most net buying since March, right? And then the most, uh, most buying of tech stocks since June. And um, this is actually also to want to mention that uh, even though the hedge funds were buying, many of the retail brokerages were down. So you couldn't buy the dip. Um, <laughs> I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Hedge funds are able to buy the dip and uh, make some trades, but you weren't. Um, I've mentioned this before in the last video, I'll just mention it again. Um, just have one, more than one brokerage and um, have more than one bank account, etc. cetera. Uh, just, you don't necessarily want to put your, all your eggs in one basket. Um, this is actually the, the chart here. It shows um, these are like single stock purchases, right? So uh, what are the big ones? And this is sort of what, what they're showing here this, this um, kind of blue line on the right side. And uh, it, it was the largest that we've seen in a while. So whether or not the hedge funds are buying this dip in order to you know hold for years and years and years, or is just buying it as a trade, as, as a rebound, you can ask them. Um, one thing is I, I will say though, this is the uh, quote here. It says, uh, many hedge funds see a sell-off as a buying opportunity. The majority of the managers we uh, speak to are framing the current problems as short-term and sentiment-driven versus long-term issue with fundamentals of listed businesses or even the wider U.S. economy. However, you got to read a little bit further. It says here, even after Monday buying, hedge funds positioning in Infotech shares is still around the most underweight in more than 10 years. And that's according to Goldman's Prime, book, uh, Prime Brokerage book, right? So... You know that you can see a little bit of discrepancy of what people are saying, <laughs> what what people are doing, and I always say, look at what people are doing. So, yes, it's true they had a massive buying day of, of you know single stocks. Um, you know who knows, maybe everyone's buying up Nvidia, but are they holding it or are they just trading it? But then you can see here, at least among hedge funds, um, they're lightweight tech, right? This is most underweight in uh, ten years. Um, this also shows you too. This is actually quite interesting. This came out um, where you know money is flowing to, right? Um, it says your risk gauge or risk sentiment gauge is at 54%. So we got a lot of money going in treasury. So that's why you saw movements there. And then, um, this is something that I thought was interesting as well is, is gold, which I don't talk a lot about on, on this channel. Uh, I'm not a big, uh, into the gold thing, but I understand that some people are, um, my, my thoughts with any one of these things, when you look at all this stuff together, Hey, there's no reason why you can't buy all of it. Right? So just, you do the, you do the proportion that makes sense for you. Uh, someone asked me on the channel, um, there's a comment said, Hey, you know how much of your money should go into speculative stuff, um, and then actually you you can answer your own question. The the way I would propose it to you is how much money are you comfortable with losing? <laughs> and so it's just a way, it's just a boy. So like you know if I have my money in, in cash or if I have my money in index funds, it's gonna be be okay. Cash obviously would be safer. It's not going anywhere. Uh, and, and compared to index funds, and then you know if you want to throw your money into treasuries, right? That you're gonna get steady returns. Um, if, if you throw your money into something speculative, right? So something that's not profitable, uh, something that, you know, they are just promise you some great story in the future. Um, just don't necessarily believe the stories that they tell you, but doesn't mean they're wrong necessarily. Just don't put any more money than, than you can't uh, afford to lose, right? So that's sort of how you, and you got to be the judgment of that for yourself. Uh, my personal opinion is, is just don't gamble everything on one, one thing. <laughs> so that's a pretty safe, pre pretty safe uh, advice there. Um, this is also interesting though, is that, uh, there is quite a bit of trading though in the market. You can see here, um, investors made a record number of option bets, uh, that equities would fall on Monday, right? So essentially, um, you know, that's sort of why you see these big moves. Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with the, uh, news from Japan. You also had the situation when Buffett was selling Apple, right? And then you had that NVIDIA miss, uh, or I don't say miss the right word. There was like the report that said they were going to, well, I guess you miss, miss the deadline. Like their, their chips are going to come out later than expected. And then, you know, you've had all this other sort of negative news. Um, now we have some other news, whether or not it's positive or negative, I'll leave that for you. Um, but uh, Kamal Harris did choose a running mate. The name is Tim Walls. Not that many people know who this person is, uh, myself included. So um, let's watch a little bit and just see how he talks and uh, I'll share some thoughts on it. 
Hey everybody, Tim here, 11 days till the election, but uh, it's my pro tip of the day out on the road. I, I gotta show you this. Uh, this right here is the headlight harness on a 2014 Ford Edge. Ford, this is unacceptable. It burned out hot on the uh, the connector. So for uh, $7.99 at Napa Auto Parts here in the city, you can replace this. Just clip off the back, use some shrink wrap connectors on there, tape it back together and put it back in. It's about a five minute fix and you're back on the road safe and sound. So. Pro tip of the day, second one is get out and vote for one Minnesota. Get out and let's take this state in a direction we know it needs to go. Go vote. So that was an older video of Tim. Uh, he is the governor over in Minnesota. And again, he's the vice presidential uh, candidate. Uh, you can see how he talks. He sounds like a regular person to me. <laughs> I actually don't know that much about him, really, Frank. Um, I looked up some stuff, which I'll show you guys. Um, but uh, he's largely unknown to the American public. Um, people do know him in Minnesota, of course. They're, they're his, uh, he's the governor over there. And um, essentially, uh, he was picked uh, to appeal for blue-collar workers, right? Which makes sense. That's why I showed you that clip. It makes sense. Hi, this is Tim. It's Kamala Harris. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Madam Vice President. Listen, I want you to do this with me. Let's, let's do this together. Would you be my running mate and let's get this thing on the road? I would be honored, Madam Vice President. Uh, the joy that you're bringing back to the country, the enthusiasm that's out there, uh, it would be a privilege to take this with you across the country. Well, let me tell you. So that was Tim and uh, Kamala Harris. And um, you can actually look him up here. Honestly, guys, out of the four people involved, so you have Trump, Vance, uh, Harris, and then Walls. I actually per prefer Walls out of all of them. So um, I'm, I'm, I, I think probably it was just a timing situation for him. Uh, you know why why is this person not running for president because uh, he just became governor of minnesota in 2019 so just you know the timing of things there's just everyone has like certain windows of when you can run but uh yeah he may end up um i mean he's in the race so if they you know uh, if they win maybe he'll be the vice president we'll see um but uh, like i said out of the four <laughs> uh yeah I, I just i just feel like he, he's uh, would be a good candidate for president um, now, whether or not you agree with his politics, that's something else, right? Something else, you know, he's going to be Democrat, so he's going to be more left policy. Um, obviously, he's not a Republican. So, you know, and, and this is with any candidate out there. You're not going to agree with everyone or everything that they, they say. So I'll just say that right there. I don't necessarily agree with everything that he says or does, but I'll just say he's a, he's a good candidate. He's a governor of Minnesota. Um, served in the military, 1981 to 2005. Uh, he's age 60, and um, he was also a teacher, which is actually really interesting. Um, after he um, got out of the military, he, he learned to be, uh, you know, went back to school to be a teacher. Then he actually, um, he, he looks like he taught in USA, but then I think he taught in uh, China for a year, which is cool. So had some international experience. And then uh, he was a football coach, and it says here that they went to the national title. Um, he coached the football team to its first state championship in 99, so they must have lost a championship, but... I mean, it's like it's he's a governor. He was a teacher. He was in the military. Uh, he sounds like a regular person to me. <laughs> I, 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 that's all I want. I just want normal people these days. It's not too much to ask. So I, I, I think I think this sounds like a winning pick to me. So that's just my opinion on that one. Um, Trump on the other side, uh, he's going to be interviewing with uh, Elon Musk. This was just announced on Monday. It says on Monday night, I'll be doing a major interview with Elon Musk. Details to follow. Um, here's my prediction. Uh, Trump's going to say everything is tremendous and that he hires the best people. Will there be some crazy announcement with Dogecoin or Cybertrucks or who knows? Who knows? Um, if, if, if you're curious, you know, can Musk run for president? The answer is no. He was born in South Africa, so he's, uh, I, he, he's ineligible. You have to be a natural born U.S. citizen. Um, I'm also unable to run for USA president. If you guys are curious, I was born in Vietnam. So, uh, I would not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing that law change, but you'd have to be some caveats with that. Um, you know, depending on how long someone lived in USA, etc. Um, you could probably put some sort of residency thing there, but yeah, Musk is ineligible to run. I'm also ineligible to run. I just want to mention that, but we'll be watching this and I'll make a video when that comes out. Cause, uh, uh, I'm sure there'll be all sorts of crazy stuff that they talk about <laughs> um, regarding stuff else in the market. So I know there's always something crazy going on in our politics, but it is an election year. So, you, you know, don't ignore it. Um, uh, Disney's raising prices. Uh, what does it say? 25% here. 
And now this was an interesting chart. Um, they refer to this as streamflation. And I'll be curious what your guys' thoughts on this stuff. Um, you know, are, are you uh, keeping all your streaming services, your Amazons, your Netflixes, your Disneys, right, your Hulus, et cetera? Uh, or is this price raising too much? And this is sort of what, you know, these companies are trying to do is like see what, what you have tolerance for. And um, as we go forward in the markets, um, we're going to see that the, not all of us have tolerance for <laughs> giving business to certain com uh, companies, right? So some power, evidently, uh, they're filing for bankruptcy. And essentially, this is like a solar one, right? And just if, if, if the, the market's not there to sell you these kind of products, it's, it's just not there, right? And so um, they're out of business, I guess. So actually, well, bankruptcy doesn't necessarily mean you're out of business, although it says here they're going to sell their assets. So <laughs> I guess it is out of business. And then it says here, face allegations of misconduct. I haven't followed the Sun Power story that much um, because, you know, th there's uh, always something else crazy going on the market, say the Musk story. Uh, he's suing people for not advertising his platform. I just made a video on that. And uh, as this sort of market unwinds, I think you're going to see more of this stuff, bankruptcies, lawsuits, these kind of things. And then the thing that's crazy is other companies that do stay in business are going to have to raise prices uh, to sort of keep their thing going. So anyway, that's what's up in the markets. That's what's up in, in the USA. I'd like to hear your thoughts on any one of these things. And I'll catch you all in the next video.